appreciated. VOA One, the hits. Welcome to Learning English, a daily 30 minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Dan Friedel. And I'm Katie Weaver. This program is aimed at English learners. So we speak slowly and we use words and phrases, especially written for people learning English. On the show today, we'll hear reports from Gregory Stockel and Brian Lynn. Gina Bennett presents Ask a Teacher. And we close the show with an American story, The Celebrated Jumping Frog of Calveras County by Mark Twain. But first... Researchers from Cuba are working with a Canadian partner to learn more about migratory birds that travel between North America and Cuba each year. Daniela Bentura is a bird biologist at the University of Havana in Cuba. On a recent day, she caught a catbird with a net in the capital city's botanical gardens. The small gray animal is one of the species of migratory birds that fly from the United States and Canada to Cuba each winter. Ventura calls out observations to her students, who take notes nearby. She describes the species, its weight, and its estimated body fat. The information provides new data for a joint project between Canada and Cuba. Ventura and the other project researchers hope to learn more about how and where the birds spend their winters in Cuba. We know a lot about their ecology in the breeding zone in North America, but very little about what happens in their wintering zone, Ventura said. Part of the problem is politics, said Lourdes Mujica. She is an expert on birds and helped organize the research. A long-lasting U.S. embargo has made cooperation between the United States and Cuba difficult. That includes scientific research. Migratory birds, of course, are indifferent to the restrictions. Birds don't understand embargoes or geographic borders. They don't need a visa to enter our country, Mujica said. I hope there comes a time when relations are normal and that we can have joint projects between the U.S. and Cuba. Mujica says the project, with partnership from Environment and Climate Change Canada, suggests what is possible. Martin Acosta, another leading bird expert in Cuba, agrees. The Canadian and Cuban partners put up a radio telemetry antenna in Cuba. The antenna operates as part of an international research network called MODIS. It is the first time Cuba has been included in the MODIS network. The antenna can follow birds that have been radio tagged in other parts of North America. It recently found in Cuba a small Swainson's thrush. The bird was first tagged in Canada's British Columbia, 5,000 kilometers away from the Caribbean nation. 
We never thought we'd reach the level of sophistication we now enjoy, said Acosta. Sophistication means highly developed and complex. Both Mujica and Acosta remember the hard days during their careers in science. Mujica said she lost over 30 kilograms doing research many years ago at a time when food in Cuba was hard to find. It is still hard to carry out their research some days, they say. Their 20-year-old truck needed a push start on a recent morning, for example. But the teams celebrate small victories. The catbird that Ventura recently captured had been given an identifying leg band back in November at the same place, data showed. The bird had gained body fat in the three months since, ahead of its migration north across the Gulf of Mexico. Ventura said, To think these little birds, which weigh less than 10 grams, cross the sea and come back, and survive is spectacular. I'm Gregory Stockel. The Polonez is a traditional Polish dance that was once banned in the country. Now, the United Nations is honoring the dance. UNESCO stands for the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. On December 5th, the Polonez entered UNESCO's list of intangible cultural heritage. The UN organization noted that the dance symbolizes cooperation, reconciliation, and equality. The dance is believed to have started in the 18th century. It has been performed at parties for the rich and powerful and at village celebrations. The Polonaise has inspired music by composers such as Johann Sebastian Bach and Frederick Chopin, and it remains an important part of school and family celebrations. Poland's Ministry of Culture and National Heritage asked for the Polonaise to be included on UNESCO's list. The ministry said its request received huge public support. Thousands of people on Facebook and on other social media were supporting the UNESCO entry. Joanna Kicza Kuszynska of the ministry's Department of Monuments Protection told the Associated Press. She said there is a huge community, including whole families, that dance the Polonaise and pass the tradition on. In the Polonaise, a whole group can dance together, explained Marcin Praczki, a dancer of the Warsaw University's Dance Theater. Another dancer, Monika Fugaska, said the dance's simplicity is its strength. She added that the Polonaise can express emotions in a special way. The dance developed from a traditional form called the walking dance. By the 18th century, it had become popular at royal European balls or dance parties. The word Polonaise is French for Polish. Szymon Paczkowski is a musicology professor at the University of Warsaw. He agrees that the dance should be on UNESCO's list. It is a dance with not only Polish, but an international tradition, he said. 
in the late 18th century, Russia, Prussia, and Austria divided and controlled Poland for more than 100 years. Russia banned the Polonaise in the areas it took over. During this time, the Polonaise became an important connection to Poland for Polish people, especially those in foreign countries. This included Chopin, who left Poland in 1830 and moved to Paris the following year. Today, Chopin's Polonaises remain among the most popular pieces for classical piano. In Poland, the Polonaise has now become the opening dance at high school pre-graduation balls. After World War II, Poland's communist officials banned it from schools. The officials worried about its connection to Polish patriotism and former rulers. 19-year-old Gabrysia Kosmal was among the students at one of Warsaw's high schools who performed the Polonaise this month. She noted that although there are conflicts between students, when they dance the Polonaise, they come together. It's a magical moment, she said. The Polonaise is regularly performed during national anniversaries, including the November 11th Independence Day. On this day, people are invited to dance in the streets with officials. Natalia Berna is an 18-year-old student who took part in a large street dance in the central city of Lodz last month. She said the Polonaise brings people together at a time when the community needs it. She added that it is important to keep the tradition alive. The leader of the Lodz street dance, Janusz Virgosz, said the Polonaise is about beauty. It is a dance that is really very simple, with beautiful music and beautiful costumes. It is worth a try, he said. I'm Andrew Smith. This week on Ask a Teacher, we answer a question from Teacher Sahadawi. My student answered a question I asked in a written test as follows. Yes, consumers do adopt new habits. Shall I consider the answer grammatically incorrect because of the use of auxiliary do, even though the rest of the sentence is okay. Thanks for answering. Thanks for writing, Saharawi. Your question points out an important purpose for do in statements. We know that do does many things in English. It can serve as an auxiliary verb in negative statements. For example, I don't have any money. It can also serve as an auxiliary verb in questions. Does Brent have to work on weekends? What do you think? or it can provide a short answer to a yes-no question. Yes, I do. No, I don't. In addition to all that, it can make imperatives or commands more polite. Do come in. Do can also be used to make sentences clearer and shorter. Bill likes to swim. 
and so does Betty. You asked if the sentence your student wrote is grammatically incorrect because of the use of do. Well, there is one function of do which we have not yet discussed. Emphasis. Do is one way users of English bring attention to a whole or part of a message. A whole sentence can be emphasized by adding do. For example, it does taste good. We did enjoy the play. I do want to learn. The sentence you ask about is grammatically correct. The use of do shows emphasis. I'm not sure if this is what your student meant when he wrote do. He might need a little more help with answering questions. But the sentence is grammatically correct. Please let us know if this explanation has helped you. Saharui, do you have a question about American English? Send us an email at learningenglish at voanews.com. And that's Ask a Teacher. I'm Gina Bennett. Now, an American story. Here is the celebrated jumping frog of Calveras County by Mark Twain. A friend of mine in the East asked me to visit old Simon Wheeler to ask about my friend's friend, Leonidas W. Smiley. I did as my friend asked me to do, and this story is the result. I found Simon Wheeler sleeping by the stove in the ruined mining camp of Angels. I saw that he was fat and had no hair and had a gentle and simple look upon his peaceful face. He woke up and gave me good day. I told him a friend had asked me to find out about a friend named Leonidas W. Smiley, who he heard was at one time living in Angel's Camp. I added that if Mr. Wheeler could tell me anything about this Leonidas W. Smiley, I would feel a great responsibility to him. Simon Wheeler forced me into a corner with his chair and began telling me this long story. He never smiled, he never frowned, but all through the endless story there was a feeling of great seriousness and honesty. This showed me plainly that he thought the heroes of the story were men of great intelligence. I let him go on in his own way and never stopped him once. This is the story Simon Wheeler told. Leonidas W. Well, there was a man here once by the name of Jim Smiley in the winter of 1849 or maybe it was the spring of 1850. Anyway, he was the strangest man. He was always making money on anything that turned up if he could get anybody to try to make money on the other side. And if he could not do that, he would change sides. And he was lucky, uncommon lucky. He most always was a winner. If there was a dog fight, he would try to win money on it. If there was a cat fight, he would take the risk. If there was a chicken fight, 
he would try to win money on it. Why, if there was two birds sitting on a fence, he would want you to decide which one would fly first so he could win money. Lots of the boys here have seen Nat Smiley and can tell you about him. Why, it did not matter to him. He would try to make money on anything. He was the most unusual man. Parson Walker's wife was very sick once for a long time, and it seemed as if they were not going to save her. But one morning he come in, and Smiley asked him how his wife was, and he said she was better, thank God. And Smiley, before he thought, says... Well, I risk my money. She will not get well. And Smiley had a little small dog. To look at the dog, you would think he was not worth anything but to sit around and look mean and look for a chance to steal something. But as soon as there was money, he was a different dog. Another dog might attack and throw him around two or three times. Then, all of a sudden, Smiley's dog would grab that other dog by his back leg and hang on till the man said it was over. Smiley always come out the winner on that dog, at least until he found a dog once that did not have any back legs. The dog's legs had been cut off in a machine. Well, the fighting continued long enough, and the money was gone. Then, when Smiley's dog come to make a grab the other dog's back legs, he saw in a minute how there was a problem. The other dog was going to win, and Smiley's dog looked surprised and did not try to win the fight anymore. He gave Smiley a look that said he was sorry for fighting a dog that did not have any back legs for him to hold, which he needed to win the fight. Then Smiley's dog walked away, laid down, and died. He was a good dog, and would have made a name for himself if he had lived, for he had intelligence. It always makes me feel sorry when I think of that last fight of his and the way it turned out. Well, this Smiley had rats and chickens and cats and all of them kind of things. You could not get anything for him to risk money on, but he would match you. He caught a frog one day and took him home and said he was going to educate the frog. And so he never done nothing for three months but sit in his backyard and teach that frog to jump. And you bet you he did teach him too. He would give him a little hit from behind and the next minute you would see that frog dancing in the air and then come down all on his feet and all right, like a cat. Smiley got him so the frog was catching flies, and he would catch one of those insects every time. Smiley said all a frog wanted was education, and he could do almost anything, and I believe him. Why, I have seen him set Daniel Webster down here on this floor. Daniel Webster was the name of the frog. And sing out, flies, Daniel, flies. And quicker than you could shut your eyes, that frog would jump straight up and catch a fly off the table. Then he would fall down on the floor again, like a ball of dirt, and start rubbing the side of his head with his back foot as if he had no idea he had been doing any more than any frog might do. You never seen a frog so honest and simple as he was, for all he was so skilled. And when it come to jumping, he could get over more ground in one jump than any animal or his kind that you ever saw. 
Smiley was very proud of his frog, and people who had traveled and been everywhere all said he was better than any frog they had ever seen. Well, one day a stranger came in and says to Smiley, What might be that you have got in the box? And Smiley says, It's only just a frog. And the man took it and looked at it careful and turned it round this way and that and says, Hmm, so it is. Well, what is he good for? Well, Smiley says, easy and careless, he can outjump any frog in Calaveras County. The man took the box again and took another long look and gave it back to Smiley and says, I don't see anything about that frog that is any better than any other frog. Maybe you don't, Smiley says. Maybe you understand frogs, and maybe you don't. Anyways, I will risk $40 and bet you that he can jump farther than any frog in Calaveras County. And the man studied a minute. Well, I'm only a stranger here, and I do not have a frog. But if I had a frog, I would risk my money on it. And then Smiley says, That's all right. If you will hold my box a minute, I will go and get you a frog. And so the man took the box and put up his $40 and sat down to wait. He sat there a long time, thinking and thinking. Then he got the frog out of the box. He filled its mouth full of bullets used to kill small birds. Then he put the frog on the floor. Now Smiley had caught another frog and gave it to the man and said, Now sit him next to Daniel and I will give the word. Then Smiley says, One, two, three, go. And Smiley and the other man touched the frogs. The new frog jumped. Daniel just lifted up his body, but could not move at all. He was planted like a building. Smiley was very surprised and angry, too, but he did not know what the problem was. The other man took the money and started away, and when he was going out the door, he looked back and said, Well... I don't see anything about that frog that is any better than any other frog. Smiley stood looking down at Daniel a long time and at last says, I wonder what in the nation happened to that frog. I wonder if there's something wrong with him. And he picked up Daniel and turned him upside down and out came a whole lot of bullets. And Smiley was the angriest man. He set the frog down and took out after that man, but he never caught him. Now, Simon Wheeler heard his name called and got up to see what was wanted. He told me to wait but I did not think that more stories about Jim Smiley would give me any more information about Leonidas W. Smiley, and so I started to walk away. At the door, I met Mr. Wheeler returning, and he started talking again. Well, this here Smiley had a yellow cow with one eye and no tail. However... Lacking both time and interest, I did not wait to hear about the cow. I just left. That's all the time we have for today's show, but join us again tomorrow for another VOA Learning English program. 
Thanks for listening. I'm Katie Weaver. And I'm Dan Fre-